प्लीज ऑल स्टैंड लेट सिंग वन सॉन्ग हो सना इन द हाइस्ट हो सना इन द हाइस्ट power above all power
to Psalms number 119 verses 59 and 60 verses 59 and 60 Psalms number 119 verses 59 and 60 I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your status I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands to the scripture may God bless us all Let us continue to sing, Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me.
सॉन्ग लास्ट सॉन्ग तेरे नाम के लिए जिए हम तेरे नाम के लिए जिए हम
Lord Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your love upon us. Thank you for the blessing that you have bestowed in our life. Thank you for this beautiful morning to helping us to see, to praise your name, to glorify your name, Lord. Lord, now we are going to listen from your word. I commit each and everything into your mighty hand in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning and praise the Lord, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank God for giving me this life. And also, I would like to give thanks to the authority for allowing me to stand here and praise the words of God among you. Today, I would like to share about empowering grace amidst vulnerability. Empowering grace amidst vulnerability. Taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 5. Before I share, let's look to God in prayer. Loving God, we thank you so much for this time. Lord, I stand before you and before your people. Touch my tongue, inspire my heart, and shake my spirit so that, Lord, I may be able to preach according to your will and open the hearts and the minds of these people so the Lord they may be able to listen to you or they may be able to hear your words through your servant in just most precious name we do us in pray amen so Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 to 5 it says comfort oh comfort my people says your God speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her town, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand the whole for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough place a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Here, Isaiah chapter 40 is also known as Deutero Isaiah. So, Isaiah chapter 40 to 55 is known as Deutero Isaiah. As we know, that Isaiah is divided into three parts that is, so the 1 to 39 is known as Proto and this Deutero and from 56 to 66 is known as Tritero. So it is thought to have written or composed between 550 and 539 BC, this Deutero Isaiah. And when we look at the scriptures, Isaiah chapter 40 to 55 and Isaiah chapter 1 to 39 is totally different. Why? Because in chapter 40 to 55 it talks about the Israelites who were in Babylon. But in chapter 1 to 39 it talks about the Israelites in Jerusalem. So now many scholars say that this chapter 40 to 55 is written by different authors. So here, in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 5, is an overture to the entire prophecy. It came at a turning point in history. Historians speak of it as the end of the Assyrian and the beginning of the Babylonian Empire. So before we go through the text, let us take a few minutes to know the situations of Israelites during 8 to 6th century BC. The Israelites were under the bondage of Assyria, after which they were again under the bondage of Babylonian. During the Babylonian captivity, many of the leading leaders as well as the rich and learned people were deported to Babylon during 598, 587 and 586 BC. So in Babylon, the moral of the Jewish community was very low. 
even though the leaders were introducing religious practice which the people could follow when they were away from Judah and Jerusalem. The exiled Jews were still downhearted. Why? Because of the destructions of Jerusalem temple. And many of them could not believe that God still cared for the people. And they lost hope. They doubted whether God could still do anything for the people, even if God chose to. The victories of the Babylonians and the security of their rule seems to show that Marduk, that is the God of Babylonian, was more powerful than Israel God. So in exile, the experience of loss and displacement spark significant religious doubt. Now they they ask about God. Is Yahweh is Yahweh not powerful? Is Yahweh not faithful? How do we hope in exile? How do we move beyond exile? Or is there life after exile? These are the questions they have been asking again and again while they were in Babylon. It was the sufferings and disappointments of the presence which made the people in exile reluctant to believe on the readiness of Yahweh to help them. Deuteronomy the Isaiah had to interpret these sufferings. He had to account for them and also to convince his audience that they were now coming to an end. Turning of the people of the captivity whom Yahweh has neither forbidden nor rejected, the prophet commands this in verse 1. That is 40 verse 1. Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami, Yomar, Elohikem. That is, comfort, oh comfort my people, say your God. So this is the divine command to the prophets. In Hebrew, Nachamu, is a default form. So literally it means to cause to breathe again. So this word Nachamu is repeated because of its urgency. The divine command has not been issued once only or merely to one prophet, but is being continually addressed to many prophets. Comfort all oh, comfort my people is the continual church of the God of the exams who has not ceased to be their God even in the midst of wrath to the messengers and heralds the prophets so in verse 2 this comfortable words was directed to Jerusalem in particular so Jerusalem is often used to refer to the whole community of Judah speak to the heart of Jerusalem speak that which will revive her heart and be a cordial to her and to all that belong to her and wish her well. Do not whisper it, but cry into her. Cry along to show saints their comforts as well as to show sinners their transgressions. Make her hear it. The 70 years captivity was seen as almost over. The Hebrew word Shaba, which means military service, feudal service, and hardship in general, that described in Job chapter 7, verse 1, refers to captivity or exile in this context. Then open ear revolves, so to speak of the people who had been transported into a foreign country and were living here in bondage, restlessness and insecurity. The time of trial had come because of her sin, but now her sin had been paid for so that God's blessing could begin. The announcement of the imminent end is followed by the announcement of expiation of guilt. 
The word here, Nisha, appears in the default form, which typically signifies as satisfactory reception. It's used here in the sense of meeting with a satisfactory payment, similar to the way Avon Rasa that is used in Leviticus chapter 26, verses 41 to 43, to pay off the debt of sin by suffering the consequences of sin. She is no longer considered to be sinful in God's eyes because of God's reconciliation with her. And Jerusalem should hear that the end of her trouble is un yes, that the end of her trouble is answered. She has received of the Lord double for the cure of all her sins. They, being very penitent, acknowledge that God had God has punished them less than their iniquities deserved. But Yahweh, being very pitiful, on in a manner that Yahweh had punished them more than they deserved. In verse 35, uh, sorry, in verse 3 to 5, here the first of them calls upon equally mysterious celestial essence to prepare the way for God's arrival. These exiles are confronted with insuperable difficulties. To them it appears impossible that they can be set free, much less restore to their homeland and national independence. The voice does not bid them make ready the highway, nor is it a highway for their journey, nor is it their nation's glory which is to be revealed. First beyond their knowledge or control, the first of history, ultimately God himself. The one supreme factor in the ongoing of the universe are preparing a road along which God will arrive and lead them. Nothing which they can devise or do will remove the obstacles that loom on their horizon. But to their amazement, these ob obstacles will vanish. Valley will be leveled up, mountain will be lower, steep heights and rock ridges will become a smooth plain. Uh, the point foresees the way back across the desert with numberless difficulties for a miscellaneous company of refuse. A map disclosed no towering rates of mountains between Babylon and Jerusalem. Valleys and hills and even a rough place represent difficulties, political, physical, psychological, which are filling their minds with forebodings. This will disappear as their wonder, walking God, marries to them and with them. And in verse 5, and in verse 5, it was the common belief of the exile that the glory of the Lord had left the temple at the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. But then it will return again in God's time. The glory that once appeared on the sacred mount and later tabernacle in the sacred Princes of the Holy of Holies is now to appear in a final epiphany by freeing the people from their servitude and bringing them back to their own land. Yahweh will demonstrate strength and also demonstrate to the people that Yahweh is a covenant keeping God. And he continues, and all flesh shall see it together. So the word flesh is often used to denote human nature or mankind in general when we see in Genesis 6 verse 12 and some number 65 verse 3 and also in some number 145 verse 21 so the idea is the deliverance of people will be such a display of the divine interposition 
so that all nations will discern the evidence of Yahweh power and glory it is final and decisive universal and all inclusive it fills times and space it is a world theophany and comes at the time of the age as a fulfillment of the divine purpose in history so in conclusion my friends my dear friends we are all bound by troubles both apparent and unseen just like the Israelites and in those moments we feel very discouraged and hopeless and start to question God why am I this way? why ignore my cry for help? why do you let me endure this kind of pain? I can't take, can take it any longer we used to say friends we all have a moment when we question our faith in one way or the other but we must constantly keep in mind that the sun will shine always again the Israelites were urged to find comfort in the knowledge that despite their sorrow, suffering and loss they will one day be free and no longer be held in slavery furthermore, God desires the people to experience comfort even in the most trying circumstances they were not freed by Yahweh because of their commitment to Yahweh good actions or repentance rather it was because of God's grace who decided that the people had suffered enough to the greatest extent God who comforted Israelites during their hardship and set free is the same God we worship today so we do not need to worry about anything but in prayer and petition with thanksgiving let us present our request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ we can find in Philip, Philippians 4 verse 6 and it is our job and business as a theological students teachers and ministers to provide the best comfort we can for God's people so my friend as we ask for comfort for those who are tireless or who suffer mentally physically and spiritually because God had already noticed our issues and is about to perform amazing miracles in our life so let's get this comfort and let's have faith in God in the means of vulnerability. May the grace of God bless us all through this short sharing. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Loving God, thank you so much for speaking to us this morning. May your words that is in every heart of these people, the Lord, we may be able to comfort and we may be able to experience your grace in the means of vulnerability Lord so the Lord we may be able to always have hope in you and we may be able to always trust you and believe you and always find comfort in you Lord thank you so much thank you so much in just most precious name we do ask and pray Amen